Let's be honest, your SharePoint internet probably looks terrible. If you've ever opened up your SharePoint internet and thought, why does this look like it's been designed in 2007? Well, you're not alone. The truth is most SharePoint intranets do look terrible. And that's not because SharePoint is a bad tool. It's because your intranet has been designed without any purpose or structure. I've spent the last 20 years fixing SharePoint intranets across the world. Those intranets are often ugly, clunky, outdated, and I can tell you firsthand, it's not a technical problem. It's a design and consistency problem. In this video, I'm going to walk through the main reasons why SharePoint intranets look terrible and how to fix them using tools in SharePoint you already have. So by the end of this, you'll know exactly what to go and look for and how to clean it up. Giving your internet a modern, clean, and professional look. But if you do want professional help setting up your SharePoint intranet, there's a link in the description below to contact me to book in a free consultation to talk about how we can build you an intranet your employees actually want to use. First up, we have spacing as a issue. SharePoint gives you a lot of flexibility with different sections, web parts, and columns, but mostly people don't use them consistently. So let's take a quick look at what good should look like. So here's a little example mocked up for um, an internet homepage for Delta Airlines. Now, I've used a lot of kind of different spatial tactics in here to make it have quite a good look and feel from the first point of accessing the internet homepage. You can see we're using this full size image um, across the top here, this header section. Um, and as we scroll down, you can tell we're then into the body of the content. Now you can see we do have this news web part, which is sliding around for us. Um, and actually when we land on this page, it is moving quite fast, but that's just to show that there is movement on the page to encourage the user to scroll down. They can choose any time to flip through the different sections. Now, in terms of spacing, you can see we did quite a lot of work here to make sure that using just out of the box web parts, this news web part uh, this with the slideshow carousel was lining up nicely with this. Now we played around a little bit with um, how much text needs to be there, um, the images, and we found that actually two lined up quite nicely. There's a subtle faint line at the bottom here we can see, which is nicely aligning to uh, the bottom of this carousel. Spacing wise as well, we've also got these uh, call to action web parts, which are nicely spaced apart. Again, this is all uh, done out of the box. We have not had to do a huge amount here. And then at the bottom, you can see we then have another quick links web part paired with an events web part. Now, this is where often we see things going completely out of control when people are using different buttons. Now, I often tell people to reverse engineer the spacing issues by actually working out how many links that you have and then make sure that you match that up. Some people, they're not so bothered by the aesthetics of the intranet, but this is where you end up with a bad look intranet. Now, there's so many things on here that I've done on purpose, that I've seen over the years that obviously are completely wrong with this, but we're gonna come on to some of these other things later on. I just wanna focus on spacing for now. But if you scroll down, you can see here, this is a, a very common example of where things go terribly wrong, um, that people have used far too many quick links. I mean, to be honest, 10 quick links, it's no longer quick at that point anyway. Um, so you want to be thinking about reducing this down to, to match up. So you're using a bit of symmetry and you're matching lines that are going across the page. So in reality, in this case, what we'd probably look to do is remove all the links after um, sort of link six. So if I just go into edit mode here, um, we'd want to remove all those additional kind of links because as I say, there's there's no need to, 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 to have this now. Uh, if I republish, just a very quick change like that. And you see it's made such a difference to the aesthetic of the page. We're no longer got that horrible scroll. Things are aligning much better. Obviously, we can take this a step further. We can start doing things like um, using a slightly different layout. Now, you can see because I've changed it to the button layout, again, we're back to the same problem where probably now we can only get five links on the page. So we might need to re reduce this down. There's probably a lot of people screaming in their heads at the moment thinking, well, what if I do have 10 links? Well, that's fine, but just think about how you're laying this out. Maybe, do, do you want to duplicate this? So duplicate uh, the web part, um, or maybe even duplicate the section. Um, so let's duplicate the, the section. Obviously, we're not gonna have two events web parts, but we can always find another web part to put in there. 
I quite like the the concept of having things uh, going from left to right. So maybe let's change the layout slightly, move the quick links over here. And then we just need to find some content which is going to fit in here. So we can still got quick links. Maybe we could categorize them. Maybe these are links based on job role. Maybe these are links based on location or whatever it may be. Maybe these are, sometimes we see things like manager's toolkit um, where there are links just specifically for a manager or a certain type of job role, for example. But you can see now, if I just remove uh, this section <clears throat> and publish, this is looking far better than it was before already. Very quickly, we've changed some of the spacing issues. Now, <clears throat> another way of changing spacing issues or resolving them, depending on the web parts, obviously I don't have a very good scenario set up here. But let's say, for example, you'd set up a couple of web parts and for whatever reason, they just weren't aligning properly. And occasionally you do get that when you've got certain web parts that next to each other. Um, this this could have been the case, for example, uh, on this Delta uh, Airlines one. Sometimes web parts don't, the tops of them don't quite add up. Now, what you can do is there is a web part called, you guessed it, Spacer. Now, I do wish that Microsoft would actually allow, allow us to, in the properties to uh, assign amount of pixels that we want spacing. The only way you can do it at the moment is just with this drag and drop. But it does mean, let's say for example, if we want to add a load of space in here for whatever reason, if we're trying to align it to something else, you can see now we can add space like this. Um, you don't have to add text and then loads of blank spaces or anything like that. You can just use this spacing web part instead. So again, that's just a little top tip for you. If you're having spacing issues, you might want to use a spacing web part to, uh, to help you with that. And just a reminder, we are here to help you if you do need professional services in designing and building a SharePoint intranet. There's a link in the description below to contact me to get um, a free uh, consultation to discuss how we can help you with SharePoint. Um, next up, we have images. Now, this could be very cheesy, 90s looking images, blurry images, stock images, which still have the kind of the, the watermarks over the top of them, they're all really poor use of um, design, and it's going to make your internet look really ugly straight off the bat. So taking a look at an example of that, let's go back to our uh, homepage here. You can see terrible kind of use of imagery blurry imagery. I mean, I, I've lost track of the amount of internets I've seen people build over the years with these weird, funny blob morph type of characters, um, which have cheesy phrases like teamwork or collaboration or uh, documents or something like that. And, and it just looks awful. It looks so dated. Um, often they're very blurry. So you can see that just this is low res image and it's quite blurry. Um, you can see cartoony type images often get used like this sort of like documents folder file thing. And it just looks terrible. These are the out of the box images which come with SharePoint. Again, you tend to find that people don't bother to change those. And again, it can just make the whole thing just feel a bit low effort, to be honest. Um, I've even seen it in very large enterprise um, businesses in the past before who don't change the stock images. And again, it just looks like low effort. It looks boring. Um, and it's just not a very good use of uh, space and design. So here's an example, um, something that we've created, um, which is a Salvation Army intranet homepage. And straight away, we're using images to very quickly um, al align people to the brand. So obviously their brand is using this uh, red uh, color. So we've got this kind of red overlay uh, on this image here, uh, which is obviously showing somebody sort of working in a um, Salvation Army kitchen. Um, as we scroll down, we've got a lot of imagery which is being used, which is obviously um, to summarize different news articles. But again, as we further down um, the page, you can see there's images, and actually these images are pulled from their website, um, but you can see it's very quickly giving you an idea about the types of content, topics, um, and, and it's summarizing it nicely in a very visual way. Now, the other thing to mention about images is that you don't have to pay for expensive third-party uh, platforms to, to, to buy stock imagery and things like that. Um, if you just wanted to get some nice high-quality imagery, you can use the Microsoft Stock Image Library. 
So literally, if you just go into, um, say for example, one of these tiles, if I was to add an image onto um, the page, we can actually uh, change the image and use uh, Microsoft's own stock image library. So by selecting on stock images, you can see this will then take me to a library which has got hundreds, if not thousands of different high quality uh, stock images, which are all large, um, good quality, and you can search based on topics. It might be, say, for example, you're looking for uh, pictures of people in an office, or maybe you're looking for um, uh, like a factory, or, or it does, there's so many different things it could potentially be. Um, but again, all you've got to then do is select on a particular image that you like, select it, um, and then that will then update it, change the um, uh, image within that particular space. And again, you're using it for completely free. It's royalty free. There's no uh, license costs or anything like that. Uh, it's all given to you completely free as part of your SharePoint subscription. Another common problem that makes a very ugly internet is the lack of branding. Um, this can come in a couple of different shapes and, and, and sizes, but basically no consistent color theme, no use of consistent imagery, um, wording, tone of voice, things like that. Uh, one page uses blue, another red, another orange. Buttons are all different shapes and shades. Uh, and your internet just feels like it's part, it's just not part of your brand. Uh, and it's all a patchwork of random web parts. So there's a couple of things to think about as part of this. So let's look at an example of how to do this well. So here's an example um, of an enterprise type of intranet. And you can see um, that their color themes obviously are blue. So we can see that the logo is blue. Um, we're using the blue on the side banner here. Uh, the buttons on the slider are blue, um, but also subtle things as well. Did you notice that actually in the imagery, this, this um, person here is wearing a blue top? as well. And often a lot of thought goes into making sure that the imagery has the same color tone palette um, that, that you're going for. So it's using the blue on the buttons, it's using blue in the imagery, it's using the kind of the brand uh, colors and things like that. You can see actually here, here's a fantastic example of that spacing issue again, um, that obviously something <laughs> something's not gone quite right here with the with the text. We've not quite finalized this, this page yet. Um, but this is somewhere that we might want to use as spacing, or maybe we just need to cut down, by looks of things, we need to cut down the wording on here. Um, so that would be a really simple thing to, to change. Just quickly just change that. Um, so maybe we just say change some photos and videos. And we'll change that. And then republish. And that should change that spacing issue. It just bothers me. <laughs> if anything, spacing is probably my, my number one bugbear. Uh, issue uh, when it comes to SharePoint interest. But then you can see the colors really well used um, throughout, whereas in contrast to something where um, we've got an ugly, bad intranet, you can see all sorts of different colors. We've got blues, we've got all these mismatched colors down here. We've got pinks used in the imagery. Um, we've got the green theme still from SharePoint. It's not been branded with any colors. We've not used a logo at all across the top. So it's still got the, the stock blue icon. And we just don't have any consistent use of colors, theme, imagery, uh, tone of voice, um, e even things like the titles of our news uh, news items here. Don't have some have got capitalization, some don't. Um, it's all a bit of a mix and match, uh, and it's just not going to give a very good feel to our intranet overall. Then we come on to movement. Now, what I mean by this is that you can have moving parts as we've seen previously. Um, some sites are way too busy, as in flashing carousels. I've seen things where people have got like four or five carousels all moving at different paces, rotating banners, auto playing videos, and it just becomes this absolute sensory overload, this nightmare. Um, and, and it almost comes back to these kind of 90s pop-up window type of uh, spam adverts where you just want to get rid of them. You don't want to go anywhere near it. So that's going to kill the adoption of your SharePoint internet. Now, I would say that having no movement is probably, I mean, it's okay. A lot of internets have zero movement and that's totally fine. But I do quite like to have internets with a little bit of movement in it, as we saw before. 
as you can see, I think this is the right amount of movement. It encourages the user to scroll down as if there's, there's something intriguing down here. But again, as soon as they start to flick through, it stops. There's nothing else moving on here. So just having one thing moving, I think is a fantastic way to keep people engaged, interested. Um, but I say, you don't have to have movement. The one thing I would avoid, though, is having too much. If you need to build out a modern looking SharePoint intranet, check out the video that's on screen now, and I'll be showing you step by step how to build out that intranet homepage. If you need any professional services and help building out your SharePoint site, there's a link in the description below to contact me. And of course, subscribe for more SharePoint videos.